All right, I'm going to get started since we're a little late. Um, exam uh, is on Tuesday at, what is it, 6.30, 7? Anyways, in the syllabus, you'll know the time for the exam. Um, yeah, I, I had a review yesterday. The videos should be online. Uh, I was very uh, forthcoming as to what's going to be in the exam. I would say it. Uh, yeah, I've been really busy these past few weeks, and it's probably to your benefit because I, I think I was too forthcoming in my review. So if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend you do. Go ahead. What's the room for their exam for our section? Oh. Uh, it's seal 50. I'm going to post something on Brightspace. Okay. Uh, at this point, it should be at CL50, but I, I have yet to confirm it with the other professors. Uh, but yeah, CL50. The, yeah, so that's going to be next to, go ahead. Is the uh, review video posted on Brightspace? No, it's on uh, the YouTube. Uh, it's on the playlist, basically. Do you know the playlist? Yeah, I, I just don't like that. That uh, what do you call this? Bright space player. It's just you can't like go forward in time or backward in time. And it's just I don't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit more about magnitude and frequency scaling. Since yesterday we I went over it pretty quickly, and uh, give you kind of more details as to what it is, and. That's pretty much it. To, on Monday, we're actually gonna have our quiz at the beginning of class. And then I'm gonna basically collect the quizzes and go over it so that you have an, kind of a chance to know what you got wrong because that will help you kind of, that way the quiz will actually help you on the exam as opposed to just being a quiz to have a quiz basically. Um, so just FYI. Okay, um, so magnitude and frequency scaling. Like I said, um, if you have your circuit, so basically I've always keep drawing it in series, so this time I'm gonna draw it in parallel. There could be another capacitor. So R, C1, L, C2. And if you take this circuit and then you, uh, so this is I, and let's say the output is actually uh, VC2. Um, if you take this circuit and you replace all of its elements with these new values, so basically uh, R gets replaced with uh, KM times R. Uh, C1 gets replaced with K. M over KF, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. KM over KF. And then L, this should be an inductor. It's replaced with KM over KF. L, and then C2 gets replaced with basically C2 over KM and KF. Your transfer function which in this case would be H of S equal to VC2 over I, will actually just become the same transfer function, but now with wherever there was an S, that S becomes S divided by KF, and the whole transfer function gets multiplied by KM. Um, so that's basically what we call magnitude and frequency scaling. There are kind of some caveats, which are that the actual magnitude scaling factor depends on the units of your transfer function. 
So if it's volts over volts or current over current, nothing will happen. Uh, and if they are volts over current, then it's going to be multiplied by Km and current over volts. It's uh, divided by Km. There's actually a very easy way to remember this, which is that if you look at R, right, it's at the, the impedance. Okay, so here, let me just look at the impedances of R. So R, the impedance is actually proportional to R. Well, it's actually equal to R. So here. Probably. So ZR is actually proportional to R. If you look at the ZL, it's proportional to L. And then if you look at the ZC, it's proportional to one over C. Um, and then uh, the if the units V over I are actually kind of impedance units, and so when you magnitude scale everything, you will multiply R by Km. You will multiply Ls by Km. And you will divide C by Km. And as a result, because V over I is units impedance, you will multiply it by Km. Uh, now, if the output was current over volts, that's actually one over impedance. So that means that you would divide by Km. And then if it's unitless, then you don't do anything. So basically, effectively, what you're doing when you're doing magnitude scaling is you're taking every impedance and you're multiplying it by Km. Uh, and then for resistors and capacitors, because the impedance is directly proportional to the lumped element parameter, so R or L, then you're multiplying by Km. But then for capacitance, because it's one over the lumped element parameter, you have to divide the capacitance. Is this making sense? No, maybe. So it's actually fairly, you don't actually, you do need to memorize these things, but it, there's actually a logic to why both R are multiplied by NL are multiplied by KM and C is actually divided. And it has to do with the fact that when you look at the impedance for both R and L, the uh, lumped element parameter appears in the numerator, whereas for the capacitor, it appears in the denominator. And so that's why this one's slightly different. In the case of the frequency scaling, what you're actually going to, in order to know that it's L over F and just uh, C over F, you have to realize that uh, R is not dependent, has no S dependence. And because we want the S dependence to become S over KF, we don't really need to do anything to R. We just need to do something to L and C. And because in the expression for impedance for the inductor, it's SL, and the impedance for capacitor is 1 over SC, you notice that S and L appear in the same. So they either both appear, either both terms appear in the numerator or both terms appear in the denominator. So if we want to divide S by K, we have to basically, so that now this becomes our new variable. And then here we have to do, so that this becomes our new variable. But of course, uh, we end up actually just changing the L to be this value. So that's why you always divide when it comes to frequency scaling. And you only do it to the capacitor and inductor, because those are the only two that depend on Fs. So I hope this helps you memorize it. Um, yeah, so it kind of rewrites what I just wrote in the previous slide. So basically multiply by Km all resistances, inductances, and impedances, uh, or voltage control sources. We're not gonna go over voltage control sources, oh, sorry, current controls voltage sources. We're not gonna have those in our exam, but to magnitude scale something with a voltage controlled source, that's what you would have to do. And then uh, divide K, uh, Km by all conductances, so capacitances, admittances, and voltage controlled current sources, voltage sources, sorry. Um, 
yeah, and then here's kind of the three rules that I outlined in the previous slide. And so that's just magnitude scaling. And then we went over this circuit in the previous class. So we basically were looking at VN over VL. And then we said that kind of, uh, that would be eight volts divided by three ohms plus five ohms, and then times five ohms in the first circuit. If you magnitude scale this by a thousand, meaning that you replace all the resistors by 3K, 5K, and 5K, you can see that the voltage out remains unchanged. Um, and uh, as we would predict, because the units are volts over volts. Now, if I had said that the output is actually I out, then the units are actually uh, I over V. So we would expect that the new transfer function is would be actually K, one over KM times uh, the original uh, current. And as we can see here, when we look at the current going into the circuit, it's just eight volts divided by five divided by plus three, which is just one amp. And then when we do this circuit, we get eight volts divided by 5,000 by 3,000, which is just one milliamp which is basically one over a thousand what we got on this circuit. So indeed it does work out. Is this clear? Yeah, no, maybe fine. frequency scaling. All right, let's look at some examples. So let's say I designed the circuit and now I wanna rescale the magnitude of the impulse response uh, of the capacitor voltage by a factor of 20. So what would I have to do here? So I guess what's the first question you should be asking? Yeah, well, we need to find KM, but I, to find KM, kind of what's the first thing that you need to know? Go ahead. Determine the relations of the input and the output. Yeah, so we need to know the units of the output to the input. So in this case, it's volts per I in. And so now we know that it's either it's either going to be h of s km h of s and 1 over km h of s um for this particular one since it's volts per current which one do we expect it to be yeah so the 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 units are impedance z and so we expect that after we frequency scale, our transfer function will become this. And he says that we want a magnitude scale by a factor of 20. So that tells us that Km has to be 20. So now we know what Km is. So now uh, what do we have to do to the resistor, inductor, and capacitor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we have to divide by one over 20, but <laughs> no, we have to multiply by 20. So this becomes 20. Remember the units of this are impedance because ZR is equal to R, CL equals SL and ZC equals one over SC. So we multiply this by Km, we multiply this by Km, and we multiply this by Km. So we get that this is the new C, this is the new L, this is the new R. So 20, uh, 40, Henry, so 20, 40, and then this becomes uh, one over 40. That's it. So we just uh, magnitude scale this to change the capacitor voltage by a factor of 20. So this changes the impulse response so that now it's 20 times bigger. So that's basically it. Are there any questions? Yeah. So in this part, in this particular case, they told us just to magnitude scaling. They, they didn't ask us to frequency scaling. So, so there's no okay. Uh, if they ask you to do both, then you do have a KF. Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'll just say like you use maybe one because it's like not gonna scale frequency. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're not scaling frequency. All right, so here's kind of the full solution. And uh, here I actually found what the impulse response was. And then um, and then I, I said that we had to multi modify the circuit to be 20R, 20L, and C over 20. And then I resolved the circuit with the modified components. And this is the uh, voltage over current that I got. And you can indeed see that this two became 40, which means that this is 20x bigger. So indeed, it, it does work out. You have to kind of understand that all we're really doing is, if you look at this circuit, you have a basically the voltage is going to be I times Z equivalent. And then what we're going to really, what we're all we're doing is we're basically saying, well, I'm going to replace Z equivalent with 20 times Z equivalent. And then what do I expect my voltage to become? Yeah, 20 times bigger, basically. So so that's why basically we're multiplying all the components by Km. Uh, and that makes our, all of the changes are proportional. So as a result, the if the response is voltage over current is just gonna become proportionally bigger. And if it's one over voltage and it's, one over that and so on. Go ahead. If the components were in series, would you only have to multiply one of the components by 20? No, because because that's the thing. If I have this circuit, right? So you have to remember that no matter how this circuit looks, right? This could be a complicated thing with a resistor sticking out here, a capacitor sticking out here. Once you find your C equivalent, this thing looks like this. C E Q. Um, and uh, and what I'm saying is, well, we're kind of multiply the C equivalent by 20, um, which corresponds to taking every element and multiplying it by 20, because that effectively, when you go algebraically, you're just gonna have that 20 on every term. And so you can just factor out that 20. Does that make sense or no? That makes sense. Uh, here, I'm gonna. If the inductor and the capacitor cancel out before you do the transformation, are they also gonna cancel out? And also, in that case, you only have to multiply the resistor since the inductor and the capacitor can allow I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to do a little example that maybe will kind of clarify a little bit. So I have this circuit here. I'm going to put a resistor here. So ZR. And then I'm going to do here ZL. And then I'm going to do here CC1. Or CL2, CL1, there you go. Okay, so we wanna find the equivalent uh, resistance looking into this terminal. Okay, so it's gonna be, you have ZR in parallel with ZL, which is in parallel to ZC, plus CL2. That's actually C equivalent. And then um, it turns out that I lied. This is actually, th these terms are actually the incorrect resistance values. It turns out that I misread the, the, the data sheet and I said all of these things were in ohms, but they're actually in kilo ohms. So now this becomes this times a thousand this times a thousand, this times a thousand, this times a thousand. So now I have kind of 1000 ZR, 1000 ZL, 1000 CC plus CL2. You can basically just factor out the one thousand. Um, I, I can. I hear. I'll, I'll actually write it out in a in long form so that to convince you that it is the case that you can just factor out the one thousand. So, starting from these two, we have uh, one over one thousand ZR plus 
one over 1000 ZC CL plus one over 1000 CC plus ZL two to the negative one. So the 1000 is common to all of the denominators. So I can actually just say that this is just one over 1000 times one over ZR, uh, oh God, okay. Plus one over CL plus one over CC plus ZL2 to the negative one. But then what is one over 1000 to the negative one? Yeah, so then it becomes 1000 times this thing. But what is this thing in terms of this thing? Yeah, does anyone know? Go ahead. Go ahead. Dinner. Oh, so what, what is this thing in parentheses? Yeah, so it's just a Z equivalent. <laughs> So basically all, because algebraically everything looks the same and we multiplied our impedances by a thousand effectively, the new impedance equivalent will always be just whatever the impedance equivalent original was multiplied by Kn. Um, and as a result, because we can look at any circuit in terms of an equivalent resistance, it all kind of leaks over to the transfer function. Does this make more sense as to why this works? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so that's a uh, magnitude scaling. So what is this? Okay. So now it's asking us to rescale the capacitor voltage by KF equals 10. <clears throat> so what do we have to do to mag to frequency scale? Yeah, so divide the S by 10, so this would be 10, and then this becomes 10, but then you can't really like change what S is, so you have to change the lumped element, so the new C and L becomes C over 10 and L over 10. That, yeah, no. Some of you look confused there. Are there any questions as to why it's C over 10 and L over 10. He might have said scale the magnitude, but on the side just say scale the frequency. No, here says scale. I think when you spoke it though, you said magnitude. Oh, maybe I did, yeah. <laughs> well, now that we said <laughs> the frequency, are people confused? <laughs> Because there is no S dependence. So basically, effectively, we want to take every S in the circuit and divide it by 10. But of course, you can't do anything with S. So the, the C and the L absorb that factor. So when you magnitude scale, you want to leave this in like the time domain, but when you frequency scale, you want to the cost domain? Or... Not quite. It doesn't really matter. It's more of like you have to think about impedances. Um, I'm just trying to give you a way to memorize this, that when you look at CR, CL, and CC, it's R. Uh, SL, and this is equal one over SC, you need to multiply all these quantities by KM. So KM, KM, KM. What that means is that your new resistance, R new, is actually KM times R. Your new uh, in inductance is L, L new is just KM times L. And your new capacitance is actually Km over C. This is your C nu. 
C over KM. Because they're inversely proportional, basically. That's basically, uh, I'm just trying to give you a way you can kind of remember the, that if you actually just write out the impedances, multiply everything by KM, these factors will pop out how you're supposed to do this properly. Same thing, if you, uh, if you write out the impedance here, basically you have ZL equals S, L, C, C equals one over S, C. We're gonna replace every S with S over K, F. So this becomes S over K, F, and this becomes K, F. So that tells you now that you have to take the impedance of the, capa the capacitance and divide it by K, F, and take the inductance and divide it by K, F. Because we want to go from H of S to H of S over KF. And to do that, all we have to do is replace every S on our circuit with S over KF. And effectively changing all the capacitances and inductances to this does that for us, because that's where all the S dependence is. <clears throat> so that's frequency scaling. Uh, okay, okay, so we went over this. Now let's try one more example. So we scale the frequency of the impulse response by KF equals 20. So what do we have to do? <laughs> this is like, divide by 20, divide by 20. Yeah, and then what? What? Ha how would the new response look like? Yeah, so basically you take every S and you replace it by S over 20. So you have, um, I'll just say something. If you see this on a quiz or an exam, for my sake, please just leave it in this form. So that should be your answer. Okay, don't 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 get like fancy, please. Because <laughs> I can see clearly that you understood what you had to do. Just take every s, replace it by s over twenty, and you're done. Of course, yeah. Now it becomes s over forty, and then you can say that this is s square over four hundred. And then the other one says over 160. But yeah, so that's kind of the answer. Yeah, and I did some algebra to get it to this, but this is actually the correct answer too. So that's all you had to do basically. Um, okay, so next. KM, okay, um, magnet scale by five. Uh, yeah, to magnet scale by five, you just multiply this by five, multiply this by five, divide this by five, and then you're done. So you have 5R, which is 20, 5L, which is three fourths, and C over fit five, which is one over 50. If you were asked to kind of do magnitude and frequency scaling, how many of you can do this now? That's good. Okay, about half. Yeah. It might be good if you try to kind of learn how to do this, but yeah. Uh, what else do we need? That's pretty much all I have. Are there any questions at this point about any of the material since we have 10 minutes? No, everyone understands resonance. Yeah, good. And you're all free to go, I guess. Yeah.